Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read Magic Tree House 11 Lions at Lunchtime at 5 50 27 by Mary Osborne. Chapter 1 Before Lunch. Jack and Annie were walking home from the grocery store. Jack's pack was heavy. It held a big jar of peanut butter and a loaf of bread. Are you going to have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? said Annie. Or uh, a peanut butter and honey sandwich? Jack started to answer but stopped. Oh man, he whispered. What is it? said Annie. Look at that, said Jack. He pointed to the edge of the Frog Creek Woods. In the shadows stood a small, delicate animal. It looked like a tiny deer. It's a sign, whispered Annie. Remember when we saw the rabbit? It was a sign of the Wild West. The deer-like creature leapt into the woods. Jack and Annie didn't stop to think. They followed as fast as they could. Jack's heavy pack dumped against his back. As, as he ran, finally they stopped and looked around. Where did she go? He said. I don't see her, said Annie. Oh, wow, said Annie. She pointed up. There was the magic tree house, was just shining in the noon sun at the top of the tallest tree in the woods. Its roof leather swayed in the shadows below. Where's Morgan? said Annie. Morgan Le Fay wasn't waving at them from the window. She wasn't even at the window. I don't know. Let's go up, said Jack. They climbed the ladder and went into the treehouse. Sunlight streamed through the window. It lit a stack of books and two scrolls in the corner. The ancient scrolls held the answers to riddles. Jack and Annie had solved all year. Jack took off his heavy pack. Did Morgan leave us a third riddle, said Annie. Looking for someone, said a soft voice. Jack and Annie whirled around. Morgan, said Annie. Morgan Le Fay had appeared out of nowhere. She looked ancient and lovely in the bright light. Do you still want to become master librarian? She asked Jack and Annie. So you can help me in my work. Yes, they said together. Wonderful, Morgan said. Then she reached into her robe and pulled out a scroll. You've solved two riddles so far, she said. Here's the third. She handed the scroll to Annie. And for your research, she pulled the book out from her robe, handed it to Jack. The book's cover said, The Plains of Africa. Africa, said Jack. Oh man, I've always wanted to go there. He opened the book. He and Annie stared at a picture. It showed herds of zebras, tall giraffes, big animals with horns. Tiny deer-like creatures. Hey, that's the animal that led us here, said Annie. Uh, a Thompson's gazelle, I believe, Morgan said. Where are the lions, said Jack. You will find out, said Morgan. Hmm, maybe we need to plan this trip, said Jack. Morgan smiled. No, go ahead. Make your wish now. Annie pointed at the picture. I wish we could go there, she said. Be careful, said, Jack, said Morgan. Just keep an eye out. For what? said Jack. The lions, of course, she said. Wait, said Jack. Too late. The wind has started to blow. Treehouse has started to spin. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. The treehouse spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter 2. Jump. Beast. Jump. Bright light flooded the treehouse again. A rustling sound came from outside the window. Annie picked out and laughed. Hey there, she said. Jack looked out too. A giraffe was eating leaves off the tree. It had a sweet, goofy face. Jack peered at the world beyond the giraffe. He couldn't believe his eyes. He saw a huge grassy plain, a wild river, and tons of birds and animals, more than he had ever imagined in one place. The giraffes and zebras were on the side of the river with Jack and Annie were. The Thompson's gazelles and the big horned animals were on the other side. Where are the lions? They say, I don't know, said Annie. Do you think it's always this crowded? Let's find out, said Jack. 
He picked up the book on Africa and looked at the picture of the animals. He read aloud. Every year, late spring, thousands of zebras and gazelles and millions of wild beasts migrate from the dry plains of Tanzania to Kenya. What's migrate mean? said Annie. Jack pushed his glasses into place. It means they go someplace else for part of the year, like birds going south for the winter. All right, said Annie. They turn the page to read more. Before they are safe in Kenya, the animals must first cross the Amara River. Zebras go first, and the wild beasts, the tiny gazelles, swim last. Ooh, said Annie in a sad voice. What's wrong, said Jack. Poor beast. She looked out the window. They seem afraid. On the far side of the river, the horned animals were standing. At the edge of the steep bank of the river, they stared down nervously at the rushing water. Jump, beast, jump, Annie shouted. Don't be silly. They can't hear you, said Jack. He studied the broad plain. I wonder where the lions are, he said. I don't know, but I have to go, said Annie. Go where, said Jack. To the river to help them, she said. Help who, said Jack. Those wild beasts on the other side, said Annie. I have to help them migrate. Are you nuts? said Jack. And he handed Jack the scroll and started out of the treehouse. Wait a second, said Jack. We haven't even read Morgan's riddle yet. And he stopped on the ladder. Read it now, sir, she said. Jack unrolled the ancient scroll and read aloud. I'm the color of gold and as sweet as can be. But beware of the danger that's all around me. What am I? Uh-huh. Annie stared, started down again. Annie, we'll look for the answer in a minute, said Annie. What are you doing, Jack called, but there was no stopping her. Jack watched as she, ho as she hopped off the ladder. Then she started to walk through the tall glass, grass between the zebras and giraffes. I don't believe her, he said to himself. He quickly put the Africa, Africa book into his, part, his pack. He started down the ladder. When he stepped onto the ground, he looked around carefully. The giraffes were eating the tree leaves. The zebras were grazing in the grass. Tons of birds flapped overhead. This is okay, he thought. He just had one little question. Where are the, where are the lions? Chapter 3. Disaster. Come on, Jack, Annie called. She was almost to the river. Just a minute, he shouted. He wanted to study the giraffes and zebra. He pulled out the Africa book and found a picture of giraffes. He read, The giraffe is the tallest animal in the world. Its legs alone can be six feet tall. And, the, and its hooves can be as big as dinner plate. The giraffe has a very powerful kick, which makes it dangerous to attack. For this reason, lions tend to avoid giraffes. Jack pulled out his notebook and wrote notes on Africa. Lions avoid giraffes. He turned the page and read more. Zebras live in family groups, as no two zebras have exactly the same pattern of stripes. Every baby zebra must learn its own mother's pattern. Jack studied the zebra, trying to see the different patterns, but in the hazy afternoon light, all the stripes made him dizzy. He blinked to clear his head, then read more. Zebras are the first to cross the river because they eat the coarsest grass. After they thin down the top layer, the wild beasts arrive and eat the next layer. They prepare the grass for the gazelles who come last. Wow, thought Jack. Each animal depends on the one that goes before, he wrote. Animals are connected. Jack heard Annie shouting from the riverbank. Jump, beast, jump. You can do it. Don't be afraid. Come on. He looked up. Annie herself was jumping as she called to the wild beast. Jack sighed. I better stop her before there is trouble, he thought. He put away the Africa book and his notebook. Then he jogged toward the river. His pack was heavy and lumpy, bumping against his back. He had forgotten to take out the jar of peanut butter and the loaf of bread. Jack decided to leave them at the treehouse. He turned to go back. But just then, Annie's shouting stopped. Jack looked at the river. She had vanished. Annie, he called. No answer. Where was she? Annie, Jack shouted. She had completely disappeared. Oh, man, said Jack.
the trip had barely begun, and already disaster had struck. He forgot about the stuff in his pack. He just ran as fast as he could. He wove his way between the grazing zebras and gi giraffes as he raced to the river. Help! called Annie. Chapter 4 Mud Bath Jack looked over the edge of the riverbank, and he had fallen into a pool of mud near the water. The thick black mud was up to her chest. I slipped, she said. It feels like quicksand. Jack threw down his pack and got on his knees. Be careful, said Annie. Don't slip too. Jack pointed to a tangle of old tree roots sticking out of the bank. Hey, grab those, he said. Annie reached for the roots. Too far, she said, breathing hard. I'm sinking. She was sinking. The mud was up to her neck. Hold on. Jack looked around wildly. He saw a fallen tree branch near the bank. He raced to it, picked it up, and carried it back to Annie. Only her head and arms stuck out of the mud now. Jack held out the branch. Annie grabbed it. Hold tight, said Jack. I'll drag you over to the roots. He started pulling on the branch. I'm still thinking, Annie. Well, the mud was up to her chin. Come on, said Jack. You can do it. I know you can. Try, try. Just then Jack heard a splash. He looked up. On the other side of the wide river, a wild beast had jumped into the water. Another jumped. Then another. They were headed right toward Jack and Jenny. Hold on tight, said Jack. He pulled on the stick again. Annie moved a tiny bit. Hey, Jack. On the moon, it felt like I weighed 10 pounds, said Annie. And in this mud, it feels like I weigh a ton. Concentrate, Annie, said Jack, trying not to sleep down the bank. I am. The lead, the lead wild beasts were halfway across, swimming toward them. Many more wild beasts were jumping into the water. It's now or never, said Jack. He took a deep breath. He pulled really hard. Just then, a shadow passed over them. Passed over them. Ja Jack looked up. Uh-oh, he said. A huge vulture circled overhead. It thinks you are near the end, said Jack. Oh, get out of here, said Annie, shouted at the vulture. I'm fine. In a burst of fury, she let go of the branch. She lunged for the roots. She grabbed them. Yes, cried Jack. Pull, pull. Slowly, Annie pulled herself out. She was covered with the black mud from head to toe. Jack helped her onto the bank, getting mud all over himself. <clears throat> See? Annie shook her head. Annie shook her fist at the vulture. I'm fine. Now beat it. But the giant ugly bird is still circled. Come on, let's get away from him, said Jack. He pushed his glasses into place. Rats, he said. Now his glasses were muddy. He tried to clean his hands in the grass. Oh no, shouted Annie. Jack turned to her. The wild beast will get stuck in the mud hole, she cried. She waved her arms at the wild beast, struggling to swim across the river. Not here, she shouted. Not here, but the frantic swimmers kept coming. Chapter 5. Ha ha. Oh no. No, no, shouted Annie. She raced down the bank until she reached the sandy cleared spot. Here, here, she called. The wild beasts followed her with their wild eyes. Jack watched in disbelief as the swimmers changed their course. Slowly, all the wild beasts were swam to where Annie stood. She waved them in like a traffic policeman. Jack grabbed his backpack. Annie, he cried, let's go before we get trampled. Keep it up. She shouted to the wild beast as she took off after Jack. They ran farther up the river, away from the incoming wild beast. Finally, they stopped to catch their breath. They looked back. Everything seemed fine. The wild beast was scrambling safely over the river bank. Soon they would graze on the grass, prepared by the zebras. Good work, Jack said to Annie. Dang, she said. Okay, now for a riddle. No, f no, no, no. First, we've got to get clean. Said Jack, you look like you're in a mud suit. High-pitched laughter rang through the air. It sounded mocking and mean. Jack and Annie turned around. They saw two spotted brown animals standing in the tall grass. Creatures had bodies like dogs, but with sloping backs, they laughed again. Ha ha, said Annie. You don't look so great yourself. What are they? said Jack. He took out the book. He tried not to get mud on it as he looked for a picture. When he found it, he read aloud. On the African plain, the hyena. 
is the ruling predator after the lion. It makes a sound similar to a high-pitched human laugh. What's predator mean? Said Annie. It means it catches things and eats them, said Jack. Oh, said Annie. Yuck. The two hyenas laughed again. And they moved closer to Jack and Annie. Quietly, Jack read more. The hyena has a reputation for being a thief and a coward. Let's see if they are cowards, whispered Annie. Let's try to scare them. The hyena laughed and moved a little closer. How? Jack asked. Act like a monster, said Annie. Now, Jack and Annie made terrible monster faces. They put out their hands and rushed at the hyena. Ah! They shouted. The hyena yelped and squirted, squirted off. Scary cat. Annie shouted after them. Come on, said Jack. Annie and Jack took off in the other direction. They ran around the bend in the river. Jack heard the hyena laughter again. It sounded far away. Good, he said. They're gone. Hey, maybe we can wash over there, said Annie. She pointed to the edge of the forest. There was a small pond surrounded by tall grass. Zebras were drinking the water. Yes, yeah, said Jack. If it's safe enough for them to drink, Zebras ignored them as they walked toward the pond. When they reached the edge of the water, Jack set his heavy pack down in the dry grass. He glanced around. No lions were inside, but then he heard something on the far side of the pond. Something very big was coming out of the trees. The end.